three photos, which one's the winner? Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to another Keep Shooting Monday. The first thing I wanted to mention this week is that I would like you to take my survey. I'd love to get as many responses as possible, although only submit one response per person, please. Um, really want to gather some information, get your opinions on how I've been doing. There's about, I think it's about 10 questions or so, should not take you very long at all. Head over to Kazillo.com at this link and you can take that survey. So please do that and uh, sooner the better. That would be great. Now we're going to be talking about tripods today. We're going to pick our winners of the smartphone, smartphone self-portrait video. We are going to have a new assignment this week. And we're also going to do something else, but I forget what it was. What was it, Kim? Oh, gazillion questions. You mentioned that your screen was calibrated correctly. On a Mac, do you think the calibrating it in the system preference is good enough, or is it best to calibrate with a third-party software? Well, Moe's nuts, no. You actually cannot do it with software only. You need to do it with some type of hardware such as a spider, this one, here's a link to it over on Amazon. You need to have some kind of a device that's actually reading the output of it. And what's actually happening is, is the available light or lack of available light in the room, whether it's daylight or an artificial light source, that also makes a difference in how you see the screen. Basically any incident light that's in the room, that's gonna make a difference. So not only do you need to calibrate what the screen is putting out, you also need to think about what the, what the other light in the room. So you have to have some kind of a box, some kind of a little piece of hardware to do it. Typically they're USB and um, sometimes they're 100, 150 bucks, but that is the right way to do it. And you can then be sure that your screen is calibrated and that your colors are gonna look good. But just software only does not work. Question from Chaz. Very useful information on white balance from a couple weeks ago. Debunks a lot of those gimmicks that just waste money and space in your camera bag. People really want something over the lens they can save money using a coffee filter or a Starbucks lid. I don't know where that myth came from. Of using a coffee filter, of using a lid for something. That's not a good idea. And here's the proof as to why. These two items, this is a piece of foam core, this is a piece of printer paper, look identically white when they're separated. When you bring them together, you can clearly see that there's a huge difference in the tones and the whites and basically the balance of them. And this is why it's very important to use an actual calibrated source if you need accurate color, all right? You cannot just grab something white and calibrate off of it because you don't know if it's actually a good source. Just any random sheet of paper does not work. You don't know how white it is. And once again, we go and we look at them, and the two of them are separate, they look fine. When you bring them back together, they're not. You can clearly see that there's a huge difference in between the two, the tones, the density, all that stuff. That's why you have to use one of those gray cards. That's why you have to use one of the color checker charts. Whatever it is, if you're going to white balance, in order to get it right and to get it done and calibrate everything properly. Question from Kalinga. When should you use gels? When do you use gels? When should you use gels? I would say whenever the creativity kind of hits you. Uh, a lot of times that's what I'm using them for is creativity and to add something to a portrait, whether it's a blue color or a, maybe it's a warm tone or a cold tone in a portrait, whatever it may be. So really it's going to come down to your creativity when and where and how you want to use them. There are, however, times that technically you want to help it. In this particular photo, I was actually, this is the, the easiest example that I can show you. There really wasn't a lot of exterior light that I had in the scene when I was photographing this particular kitchen. So since there was no available or sunlight or anything like that coming in, 
it was kind of in an area where the, the one window was kind of closed off and um, the kitchen was kind of in the middle of the house. And anyway, that was, it, I really wanted to balance that light. And so when I was adding my strobe, adding the flash uh, light from my SB800, SB900, I could really see a difference in between the ambient light in the room, the incandescent light in the room, and my strobe and the temperature of, and the color of those. So by adding a gel on there, I was able to balance the two of those, making the entire scene look a lot better. So one is creativity, one is to kind of fix your white balance. I really can't think of any other reasons why you would use them. Um, really, it, it comes down to creativity when I'm using them most of the time. A great way to learn more about photography, more about lighting, more about your camera, and really be able to kind of create what's in your head is to take a photo that you enjoy or that you want to be able to duplicate and to actually duplicate it. That can take a lot of work sometimes, but it's very rewarding because you're, it makes you really study the light and study the composition study say the posing if it's a portrait or the angle or whatever it may be. So that leads me to this week's photo assignment, keep shooting photo assignment, and it is going to be to find a photo, whatever it is, similar to the one that I have here where uh, my friend Jack Ansley actually photographed me, very similar in a pose uh, done by Norman Rockwell of Richard Nixon. I thought this was a really cool photo and I said, you know what, this is a cool one to show off, to do, and to kind of launch this assignment. So I want you to go out, find some kind of a photo, whether it's a portrait, a landscape, a anything, a seascape, whatever it may be, go out, find it. Uh, it could be a still life. This would be a really great assignment to find a still life that you absolutely love and you want to duplicate it for your own. And again, this is for learning purposes. So... You know, do your best, get it really, really close. Or if you uh, want to say, if you want to submit two photos, maybe you want one that's really, really close, as close as you can get to the original. And then maybe you want to submit a second one, which has your flair to it and your whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? Your, your own little creativity parts, pieces to it. Go ahead and do that. When you are posting it to the forum, uh, please make sure that you post the original photo or at least a link to the original photo as well as your photo and let me know if it's the one that you are originally copying the same or if you're adding your own creative flair to it. So uh, questions or anything like that, send them over. Uh, but I think this is going to be a really cool assignment. In two Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's when all the photos will need to be posted to the forum so that I can choose the winner. So good luck. Let's talk tripods. Now I've got a couple different things here that I'm going to explain. So uh, it's going to be a lot of information in here. So uh, stick around for this entire segment. Number one, my favorite tripod is my three-legged thing tripod. It's less than half of the weight of my Bogan that I've been, uh, that I also have, which is my kind of second primary studio, which I'll explain in a minute. But uh, my three-legged thing, Jack Tripod, is an all-aluminum tripod, probably this tall. It's taller than me. has a really nice little ball head on it, and it, it closes up to about that big. It's really, really small. Uh, I love the cam locks or these twist lock things. Really great, nice and portable, very light. My favorite tripod of everything that I've used. And uh, just because I, could, I keep it in the truck all the time and always have it with me. So it's, it's been a great tripod. Absolutely love it. So uh, thanks for creating that one. Three-legged thing. Um, my studio tripod primary one is this one. My Bogan 3221 legs with a 3047 head. Now, the three-way head is great for the studio. It has um, its advantages because you can very easily turn it left and right uh, or change this and just give it a tiny tilt forward, a tiny tilt back, um, maybe a little tilt to the side or something like that. Three-way heads are great for the studio. They're also great for heavier cameras, like if you're using a, a medium format camera, if you're shooting, say, a 4x5, something like that for a newer for a student, you want a heavier tripod. 
Now, um, you want the the heavier the tripod, the the entire thing that is the heavier the entire tripod is, the better it's going, the more stability it's going to give your camera with a longer lens. So, say a medium format, like I said, or a four x five, that's where you're you're going to get the most stability. So. If I did need something with a lot of stability, then I'm going to go this route when shooting my 300, but uh, say the 300 on a tripod or something like that. But the three-legged thing, as far as its weight capacity, is plenty. And in fact, the carbon fiber series, I believe, have a higher weight rating than the aluminum series, which is the one that I have here. Next, I have this one right here, which is actually just a stand, and this guy which is a super clamp and then I have this little, neat little plate here and I'll put all links to all this stuff inside of the poster inside of the YouTube description this I have this neat little plate here again from Bogan and I have one of the man or Manfrotto same company now uh, I have the Manfrotto 804 RC2 head once again a three-way head this thing is great for mounting cameras pretty much anywhere that I want to mount them if I want it upside down, which I've done for doing videos of concerts uh, or photos of concerts, I can actually take my remotes, my remote control setup and my quantum remotes and hook them up to the camera. And when I fire a picture with the camera that I have in my hand, this one will also fire remotely, which is a really cool setup. A lot of sports photographers use that kind of a setup. So this would be great for them to just be able to mount it wherever. Instead of having this, uh, you know, say you just have a pole somewhere or the side of a building or uh, maybe, a, I don't know, a chair or something like that. Whatever it is, you don't have to have the full stand, a full tripod with this big, huge, uh, wide legs and wide pattern. Um, it's going to be a lot more compact. And I think it would be, a, a, you know, a, a very useful thing. At least it has been for me. Next thing I thought I would mention, even though it's not really a tripod, it's something that I do use often. It's kind of a, an equipment mount, so I thought I would mention it. It's this little angle bracket that I use for my strobes. It allows you to angle the flash forward and back, that kind of thing, instead of only being able to keep the flash straight up and down, which I have done. If I absolutely have to, I can, but it's obviously not ideal. This actually came as part of a kit with a softbox, a softbox ring, a mount, and this little guy and a stand actually i'll put a link to that in the description and so uh, by being able to angle all that stuff just makes it so much simpler you can actually shoot it the right way and it's great for in the studio as well as on location and i will often take a stand like this mount my flash on it and there we have it i have two two different stands i could have a tripod which i don't use a lot for portraits but I do a lot for landscapes, obviously a lot for my videos when I go out and do them on location. So um, I'll have, usually I'll be shooting with my three-legged thing. And then I will have uh, this guy if I'm using a flash or that kind of thing for, uh, for a portrait. So let's talk about which one you're going to buy first. Well, if you are mainly traveling, if you're mainly doing location, and you're not going to use it a ton, but you'd like to have one, I highly suggest the three-legged thing and a lighter weight tripod. You're going to be doing more traveling, moving around with it. This is going to be the better way to go. You're more likely to use it more. If you're working more in the studio and you don't get around uh, a whole lot or you're not doing a lot of like location stuff, a heavier duty tripod with a three-way head is probably going to fit you better. Um, like I mentioned, the studio work is nice with that three-way three, three -way head. Those tiny little incremental detail or changes, um, you know, that's the better way to go. And then this is more of a custom kind of a rig right here with the, the mount, but gets me out of a couple of jams. I throw it in the truck once in a while if I think I'm going to need it. Even if I only need a mount like a microphone or something like that, it has a little quarter 20 mount. Oh, and you know what else I didn't mention? I probably did not mention my... Um, all these should have little quick release plates, which once again is, is cool to have. All three of these have it. Uh, this is the six-sided one, the older one from Bogan, and then um, three-legged thing has one, and this is the new one from Bogan slash Manfrotto. I always forget that they're one company now. So anyway, uh, questions or comments, uh, let's hear them. Add them into uh, the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. So I got it down to three winners this week. 
of the last smartphone self-portrait keep shooting assignment. Uh, our first one is Bren. I really like the angles of this photo. Obviously, it was shot in his car in a parking lot, looking in the mirror, all that stuff. Thought it was really neat. Love the different angles and things that are going on. I think it'll be a really cool one, especially if he's a car guy. And uh, so I think it was neat. The only thing I may have changed would be the, the post-processing. Maybe it would have been a little bit better sepia rather than kind of that yellowish tone that it has. But uh, still really cool. I uh, like the use of the mirrors and the different things there. So awesome. I love it. Next one from Dave. This one is just a very simple headshot. Breaking the rules a little bit because he's looking down. He's not, you know, looking. Usually when you're doing a portrait, you're going to have the camera above you and coming down. But he's kind of looking down into the camera, which breaks the rules. But it really works in this particular instance. The post-processing on this is really good. Love the extra contrast. And uh, just by looking at the photo, you can see that it's cold. Um, once again, something that I would work on would be the umbrella that's there in the background. It kind of bothers me. Um, although I like the idea that it's getting rid of whatever distracting thing is probably in the background, but just the lines there still bother me a little bit. So maybe I would have taken the umbrella a little bit farther away, which hopefully would have sent it a little out of focus. Um, that's the only thing that really bothers me. Either that or maybe keep it a little bit centered better so that it's maybe right around the back of his head in the right spot. I don't know, but um, other than that, I think it's really cool, and that's why I picked it as number two. Now, number three, Craig, you're three for three. You've got three photos in here, and I also just found it interesting that all three photos here that I chose are monochrome. Anyway, neat photo, love the composition, um, like the fact that you put your other camera in there, it shows that you are a photographer. But I think it's cool that you shot it with your iPhone. I think you said four and um, you know a little bit of post-processing, maybe a little bit of work done to it. But overall, I think it's a solid image and um, shows that you have a good grasp of the camera, weather and light and, that, and everything to do with photography rather in, in any form rather than just in your DSLR. So uh, that definitely takes practice. And that was the goal of this. That's the goal of all keep shooting photo assignments is practice so that you can improve your photography. So make sure you check out that survey and fill that in for me. And also make sure you do your photo assignment. Make sure you do your homework, do your photo assignment. And like I said, it's due uh, two Fridays from now. I don't know the date, but that's okay. I'll put it up here and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, get it up on the form. By the way, I will remind you, it is best to post them on Flickr first, then do hit the share button on Flickr, then hit the BB code button, copy that, con that text that's right there, paste that into the forum post, and that is the best way to share photos on the forum. Saves me a little bit of server space. So uh, questions, comments, concerns, love to hear them. Greg Cazillo, cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. See you.